Hi Gemini, this is your general tarot reading for Gemini, Sun, Moon and Ascendant or Rising Sign for the month of October. Gemini, let's do as we always do. We'll shuffle the cards and wait on all the right ones to come out for you, my love. And in the meantime, let's talk about the energies that you may feel throughout the month. So, we're still under the effect as we leave September and go into October of the big Aries full moon that happened for you in your 11th house. And that's the house of friends, groups of people, teams of people. Uh, social media and there may have been a moment where you may have felt Gemini that your voice was getting lost a little bit within a large group of people uh, your needs weren't being met your needs weren't being heard maybe for some of you you felt you had to comply too much with friends or so on like that maybe if you stepped out of what your friends were doing or what the team was doing or what the trends are on social media then if you stepped away from it, then it wouldn't be good for you in some way. You felt a bit trapped by that. And now you're saying, no, enough with that. I don't have to just follow trends. I don't have to just do what my friends are doing. I don't have to just go along with what teams and work, for example, are doing. I want my voice to be heard. I want to be seen as an individual. I want to be seen as separate to other people. It's a great month for those of you who are really trying to develop a new style, a creative style, a personal style, particularly on social media, to really amp that up now. You want to separate yourself from everybody else. Be that bit daring, be that bit different, and get understood for who you are, for what you bring creatively. Yeah. It's a big element here of not being like everybody else, wanting to step out, wanting to be seen as a fun person, as a person with their own unique ideas, and as a person with their own unique look and approach to life. So it's a wonderful time for that to express yourself as an individual, as a happy and playful individual too. Maybe for some of you, some groups of people were weighing you down a little bit, some of your friends maybe demanded an awful lot from you or a team, as I said, in work. Could have been all that bit demanding. They want, they want, they need, they need. And you're saying, well, I gave you what you wanted. Now I'm going to give me what I want. And I'm actually going to please myself and I'm going to please everybody else because I'm going to create something that other people can enjoy. So that's a lovely energy for you there, Gemini. Mercury is also in Libra there in the fifth house. So your ruler is saying the same. Your mind is on creative expression, having fun, having a bit of pleasure, and maybe going to a few parties, <laughs> doing a few daring things. It's about being bold, bold and daring. You're going to be bold this month, Gemini, and it's worth it. And you know, fifth house has a lot to do with happiness and bliss and joy. And as we go through the month, there may be questions where you say, am I happy? Does what I do in my life give me joy? Is this authentic to what I really want in my heart? Does the work that I do, do the projects I do, the things I create, are they making me happy? Are they absolutely an expression of my true soul? So that's gorgeous. Now, fifth house can also mean children. So a lot of you could be having fun and pleasure with children and really, just really enjoying your time with them. And it could also be to do with politics. Fifth house can be to do with politics. Those of you wanting to get involved in community politics or fighting the good fight on behalf of somebody, it's a good time for that. Now, let's see, October 6th, we have not got one car, Gemini. Why? Why is that? October 6th, Venus is going retrograde in Scorpio in your sixth house. So this could mean a few things. With Venus going retrograde, it could be about money and love and self-worth. So you could find that money from work that was due to you from work some way, maybe a tax rebate or a job that you did a while ago and didn't get any money as the first card comes out, that you didn't receive proper payment. Okay, a bunch of cards came out. Yeah, okay, I think we're on to something. You didn't receive proper payment for work that you'd been doing. And from around the 6th, 5th, 6th of October, you might see that, oh look, the Gemini card comes out for you, my love. Uh, you might see that money return to you in some way. Now, it might mean that you have to 
really push for it and dig deep a little bit for it, maybe go back through old documents, maybe pull out the receipts, maybe pull out invoices, whatever it is, count up your hours and do that kind of work and that could bring you the money that's due to you, wherever it was that you felt that you were missing out or not paid enough. Now, this is all happening in your sixth house, so let's focus on other things here. Um, if you're attracted to somebody in work, can I caution you against going for that this month? Uh, because they may not be all that they're cracked up to be and you don't want to regret that. Same with people joining your team in work or entering your work sphere, helping you out some way with the work that you do. They may seem like very nice people at first if it's a new person you're introduced to, but just show caution. Don't reveal all your secrets all at once to them unless you want those to <laughs> maybe come out at a later date. So just show caution again in the workspace. And certainly if there are the os uh, osif, osif, office even, if there are office gossip, steer clear. You might find that there's a lot of gossip in work about payments, about money due to people and I'm due this and I should be paid more for this and that. Steer clear, steer clear, unless you're directly involved in some financial issue in, in matters of your job or employment. If it's not your business, Gemini, stay the hell out of it. Because you'll be glad you did, really. Because some people just like to complain. You're going to find that out too this month. Some people are just born whingers, born whiners. <laughs> you fix one problem for them and they need you again because there's another and then another and then another. And then at some point you go, you actually like just complaining, don't you? You don't really need my help. You just want to complain. <laughs> yeah, stay away from those types too, Gemini. Um, but also, when it comes to health, if Say, for example, if you work, if you work with money or insurance, or if you are somebody that's signing, you know, doing documents for travel insurance or house insurance or something like that, health insurance, be, be very extra diligent about ticking all the right boxes and about doing it all perfectly, because you want to put your focus in that, in documents particularly financial documents and health insurance documents, investment documents. If that's something you're doing now, Gemini, put a real, put a real Gemini wise eye on that one and it will work to your advantage later. October 9th, there's a beautiful Libra new moon happening again in your fifth house. So it is this, this month for you, Gemini, it just seems that it's really all about finding where your pleasure is. And if you suddenly stand up and say, oh, great, it's pleasure time, it's fun time, and you're not feeling it, you're saying, I'm, I, aren't I supposed to be feeling happy right now? <laughs> didn't didn't she bear tell me that I'm supposed to be having fun? Why does it not feel like fun? Well, as I said to you before, have fun where you can and also notice where you aren't having fun because they are the big signposts, the big indicators saying, Gemini, pay attention to this. This isn't bringing you joy. Therefore, you must examine and analyze why this is happening. So yeah, um, for those of you doing creative projects around the 9th of October, it's just such a gorgeous time to bring in that real essence of creativity, but infuse it with your personality, with your soul, and with your joy. It's, it's really about putting your fun and shine and personal expression out there to separate yourself away from others, to be seen as an individual and to be seen as a little sparkling, twinkling light of your own. Yeah, absolutely. Gemini, you should be neon this month. Really, just say, I am Gemini with a big neon sign because... It just shows that you're different to everybody else. So that's a wonderful thing. Mercury, your ruler on October 10th, goes into the sixth house. So look, Gemini, there's a big emphasis here on the sixth house, which is everything to do with your routines, how you approach work, 
your office space, the systems that you work within, the computers, the technology, what the instruments and tools that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, they'll all come into focus. And you may have to really examine, have you the right tools needed for where it is you want to go? You want to express yourself creatively? Have you got all the right things that you need to make that happen? So your mind is really very much on that this month. Uh, and to be a powerful individual, separating yourself away from other people, there are extra things, it seems, that you need. So you'll find what they are, and you'll bring them in to your little work sphere. Um, but also, I'll say this, that there could be challenges in work, there could be a few little dramas in work, maybe a bit of friction, clashing with maybe dominant people, uh, again, focusing on the finance, maybe feeling that you're not getting paid enough for the work that you're doing, or the work that you're doing isn't in your bloody job description. Hello, this wasn't in the contract. <laughs> yeah, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. But what I'll say to you, Gemini, is don't get all crazy about it and just throw the towel in and say, I'm, I don't want to do this work anymore. I, I want to be free. I want to travel the world, as you're getting your travel documents together, perhaps. And I, this job is just holding me back and holding me down. And these bitches in the office, they just like to gossip and whinge and whine. And I am just not getting paid enough for this shit. <laughs> but you know, what you could do, rather than just jump sticks and leave, is to really focus on how to make that work for you. There are lessons here in this Gemini and I know the emphasis is all about the work sphere and it might be very tempting to jump ship as I said and go into a new office but learn something, learn something here. Learn how to separate yourself from those people in the office that you don't want to be part of. Learn how to ask for more money. Learn how to get your working sphere organized. Learn how to schedule your time. Time management is a really big thing here too. Learn how to get a little system in place where your work isn't so stressful. Yeah, and definitely schedule in a lot of rest time and a lot of lunch time. Don't be one of those people, Gemini, who works through their lunch, please. Just because you have that wonderful energy to do it and just because you get focused on a project when you're really in that zone, take time for your health here because health is quite a big deal for you this month. Uh, you might want to be changing up your diet. You might want to be changing up um, your, your food, your approach to food in general. Maybe you want to eat cleaner. Maybe you want to switch your diet. Maybe you want to incorporate different types of food or change it up a little bit. Maybe doing detoxes or whatever it is you're doing. There is an emphasis for you this month, Gemini, on cleaning things up and kind of detoxing, uh, unpolluting yourself, unpolluting your mind also. Uh, you'll be quite discerning this month. You, you'll be in the zone too, Gemini, where you will recognize where it is that you should be giving your energy to, to the people, to the work, to the, the, to the projects that you're doing. You, you're more engaged now with how you spend your energy in doing all of those things. So it's very positive. Um, the sun then, on the 23rd of October, goes into Scorpio in the sixth house. So again, it's this huge em emphasis again on you wanting to assert yourself, be an individual, separate yourself away from the crowd, find this personal happiness that you're looking for, but also now to find a, w a way to do that, to find a good system that allows you to sustain that happiness in the long run, in the long term. Yeah. And again, Certainly, good things could start happening for you in the work sphere. Sphere. Why? Am I, why are the words so difficult to say? Asif instead of office, and now sphere. Work sphere. Ah, Gemini. Gemini. I don't know. So uh, October twenty fourth is the big Taurus full moon happening for you in the twelfth house. Moon in the twelfth house. 
psychic vibes, psychic energy. You've also got Mars in Aquarius in the ninth house. So what it, what you could be building up towards the end of the month here, Gemini, is getting very, very deep into religious studies, very, very deep studies about something that I think is a little bit out there, a little bit different, a little bit unusual, and maybe a little bit mystical. The arts of, the, the esoteric arts. Uh, certainly something that tunes you into something bigger than you. You're going to be very focused on that. I'm very disciplined about it too. Perhaps some of you might take on towards the end of the month a new health dis discipline that also incorporates spirituality like yoga or, uh, I don't know, Tai Chi or something where there is a mind, body, soul energy to moving the body with the soul type of vibe. And also in terms of uh, dance, psychic dance. Why did I say that? Yeah, just moving your body more. Getting your body and spirit connected again in some way. That is what you're really involved in. And it could be something as simple as getting a massage or really getting involved in good, clean food or even music. For those of you who are interested in music towards the end of the month, you could find that music gives you great peace, great serenity. And it gives you that quiet space. There'll be lots of quiet spaces for you towards the end of the month, Gemini, because you want to be in that quiet, gentle space where you can think, reflect, and clean your psyche, clean your soul. There'll be a lot of salt baths and saging and getting yourself back aligned, both physically and spiritually. And certainly music, maybe even traditional music, foreign culture music could be key here too, but you're indulging, indulging in this wonderful psychic mind, body, soul energy at the end of the month. Now, Jim and I, we're waiting on two more cards. If they don't come soon, I will choose them if you don't mind. So I will choose the last two and I chose a good one for you. The star, one more, And the Page of Swords. Sometimes people say this is quite a Gemini card, but there they are anyway, Gemini, we have them all. So let's move over and like magic, bling, we have our grand overview. So we begin with you. There's a certainly a focus on money as we start the month. And you are, two things are happening. You are really now putting your mind and focus out there in how to make money. You're really, this month, embracing the whole concept of moving slowly and steadily in order to bring in the new money. Whereas I said to you before, you remember, not just throwing everything out and saying, I'm jumping ship and I'm finding something else. You're learning something here. You're learning that there are details about your finances and about your work life that you could give more time, effort and energy to to focus on those small details so that you build your skills up a little bit before you make a decision maybe to change something within your work life. So it's details, details, which is very sixth house to getting everything perfect, getting everything streamlined, organized. And again, you will recognize the energy of doing this slowly and surely shapes up uh, a way for you to bring in money. So it's quite the hare and the tortoise energy here. You're prepared this month to put all of your effort, energy and focus into one thing and one thing alone that is a, allowing you both to be an individual and also something that you can work with. So you want to, it seems, to work as an individual, maybe self-employed, to make the money, but you know that there are a lot of things to focus on and a lot of organization is needed for you here to get everything perfect for you, for your future, for your ability to make money in a steady way. And beside that, again, it's the same. It's the card of investing. You're prepared to invest this time, energy and effort 
into something. You definitely have your eye on doing something, Gemini, that's going to bring in the money. But yet you're also aware that we're in a period now of focusing, paperwork, documents, getting a schedule of work together, streamlining how you work, getting a little program, getting a, putting the hours together where you work, putting hours where you don't work, how do you cha charge people for the work that you're doing. So it's all this dynamic that you're prepared to invest in and prepared to move slowly with because you know, you know by the end of it, Gemini, the things you really put your time, energy and effort into now, streamlining the things, they're going to pay off later for you. Definitely pay off for you. Investments, I will say this, Venus retrograding in Scorpio in the sixth house. For some of you, A, you want to invest more in your health. We've spoken about that. Uh, you want to invest more in your own sense, sense of self-worth and self-esteem. We, we'll talk about that too. But also, for some of you, is there something that you have uh, investment somehow, invested in some way in the work that you do? Maybe some of you have put money into a project that you're doing, so it could represent that. But for some of you, you might want to this month check out your health insurance and work to see, you know, your contributions and work. Go and look at what you're getting there. Uh, and go through the documents, go through the contracts, just to make sure that the insurances that you have in your work are all meeting your very high standard, Gemini. Yeah, so that's something to do. I'm also going with this, investing in work, money raising. Some of you could be involved in some money raising scheme in work to generate capital for your own business or for your work. I don't know, health generating money? Could some of you be signing up for a marathon or doing some charity work also to bring in money for work or for a charity? Maybe a group of you in work are doing something together for charity. I don't know, maybe a fun run or something like that. But it's all good. It's all good. But just take it easy. Know how to pace yourself. That's where we're going with this. Now, a lovely card. Uh, here we go with the energy of you looking back and really thinking about your past in some way, past loves perhaps, but being the Gemini card, some of you could be really looking back on your own life and saying, I remember when I was more carefree, I remember when I was more fun, I remember when things were lighter, when things weren't so heavy, where I didn't have to deal with those office bitches. <laughs> Where things came easier, why is everything so difficult right now? It's, it's like I'm pushing everything uphill. Why can't it be easy like it was before? Well, they are the big questions you'll be asking this month, Gemini. And I think for you, the answer is that maybe your voice has gotten lost. Maybe you didn't give yourself the space to shine creatively and to shine as an individual. Maybe you put too much emphasis on being part of a group, being part of a team, falling in line with something uh, and not separating yourself out from other people as the wonderful, unique individual that you are. So sure, some of you could be looking back on a Gemini. Maybe you had a relationship in the past with a Gemini that it's coming to mind because Venus retrograding is going to bring old loves to mind. Maybe they'll come back to you either just in your mind or maybe you will get contacted by this old Gemini love and it, they might they might remind you of who you used to be so it might be welcome but as I'm saying to a lot of people this month remember remember there's a reason why they're exes <laughs> don't forget that if you do talk to them if you do reconnect with them just take the good vibes from them, give the good vibes back and say, look, the past is in the past, nice knowing you, uh, maybe we'll see each other again, maybe not, <laughs> but don't allow an old love to come back, sneak back into your life, Gemini, this is not the time for that, and particularly if it was somebody that you work with, definitely, definitely not. <laughs> Now, here we have the card of justice, quite a Libra card, and this is Libra season. 
Now, here we have an issue to do with contracts, law, karma. And beside that is the card of feeling defeated, the feeling, feeling let down and disappointed, feeling sad, feeling that you can't go on, that something has hurt you very, very deeply. Now, maybe a Libra has hurt you deeply or through the month of October will really make you feel a little bit like that. So just be cautious of that and be warned of that. But for those of you who are dealing with some sort of contract, Sixth House, Venus Retrograde, Scorpio, could it be a health claim going through the legal department or some legal channel to get a, either a work claim or a health claim looked at? And you're just not impressed at how that's going. So here's why it's a good idea, again, to go over old documents, documents, documents. Pull out every single document and receipt whatever it is that you have now, Gemini, and look through it, particularly if it's to do with a work insurance claim or something like that, or, or a health claim, so that you're not left feeling disappointed by that. Um, and yet here we have again beside it another air card. Uh, you've got the Knight of Swords beside the Soulmate card, as they say, the Two of Cups. There is a vibe here, Gemini, where you could be missing an air sign. It could be a Libra. It could also be a Gemini or an Aquarius. You're missing them. And you feel that they were your soulmate. Maybe that there, maybe there's been arguments. Maybe that you're, you're not getting along. Maybe there's a clash of ideas. Maybe things were said. Feelings were hurt. Maybe they were a bit too hard on you. And maybe because you were hurt, you retaliated and cut them down to size. And now it feels, oh God, I've ruined it. I've ruined it. And I feel that they were something very special to me, a soulmate in some way. And I want to say to you, Gemini, that if it was meant to be, it was meant to be. If not, you'll get over it. However, in saying that, I don't think all is lost here between you and another air sign, possibly a Libra. I think you can make it happen and reconcile again. Reconcile your differences, come back together, be all friends again, be happy again, and, and rekindle a love, perhaps, that maybe bad arguments or nasty words almost broke, okay? Now, maybe it was just a clash of ideas. They wanted to do something one way and you wanted to do something another way. And the, the underpinning all of this, this, there seems to be love, despite the fact that you don't get on. They, despite the fact that they sometimes seem to hurt you and leave you feeling very misunderstood and dejected and they can say very painful things to you. Yet, you love them. Yet, you love them. So, there's a feeling here of all is not lost. This is something you can get over. I don't get a vibe of it being a toxic relationship. I just think your communication skills between the two of you really need to be fixed. And I know maybe the other person is very stubborn, particularly if the other air sign is an Aquarius. <laughs> They can get very adamant about their opinions, and Libra can too also. But try to, try to find a balance. And also, don't lose yourself in these relationships or in this particular relationship. Stand up for yourself, assert yourself, and it's okay for you to have your opinion just because the other person disagrees with you, just because they don't go along with what you're saying and they get all pissed off about that. It's okay, you don't have to return and say, look, I'm sorry, it was just my opinion, I'm sorry it made you sad. Fine, but don't back down. You're allowed to have your opinion. You, you can build bridges and be nice to each other and apologize for any hurts or upset that was done while you were arguing, but don't say, I was wrong, you were right, type of thing, you know? Unless you were wrong, Gemini. <laughs> but usually you're not. Usually you're very savvy with things. Usually you're a good observer of how people are doing things. So you're not very often wrong when it comes to your opinions and thoughts. So just remember to assert yourself. 
you, you don't have to, as I said, you don't have to kind of say, I was wrong, you were right, with the things you believe in, but maybe with the things you said, <laughs> you know. Now, here we have a feeling of, again, you feeling that this is an unusual combination. Towards the end of the month, there's the, the feeling that you have everything and nothing. Now, why is that, Gemini? You have all that you need, everything that you want, but yet it's not feeding you. You need more. You need more money, perhaps. You need to tie up. What you need, it seems, Gemini, is to do something very creative, something that you're absolutely passionate about, that you're willing to put a huge amount of heart energy into and an enormous amount of energy into it because you're deeply, deeply into this thing and you want to make money from it. But yet it's, it's that feeling towards the end of the month of saying, I, have, I almost have it, but it's not quite there. I almost have everything I want, but yet I'm not happy. Why am I not happy? And maybe that's why you'll need a little bit of a retreat towards the end of the month with the moon in Taurus going into the 12th house, retreating a little bit to have a think about how come I have so much? How come I have everything that I really want, yet I'm not happy? And it could, a lot of it could be, Gemini, is that it's not the things that are supposed to make you happy. It's your interaction with them, your energy going into them, your passion and drive and focus and love going into them. Because a thing is just a thing. Money is just money. Anything, a project is just a project. Without your heart and soul and wonderful Gemini energy into it, it means nothing. So that's why it's, it's like it's so close but so far away to, to really get that thing, move, that, get that positive feeling moving again, Gemini. You need heart energy and you need, you need to be passionate and not back down about getting your needs met, about getting your wants and desires met and about making money from it. You're looking to horizons with this card, and I know Mars is in Aquarius there in the ninth house. I think a lot of you by the end of the month could be really strongly considering moving away to somewhere, maybe a foreign place, just another city, another town, somewhere that, I don't know, you feel you have better opportunities there, you feel you can make more money there. It's almost like at the end of the month you feel, where I am, I'm not having the opportunities to make money. I'm not having the opportunities also to fulfill what I feel my soul wants me to do. There's almost a, a feeling here, particularly when these two cards are like that, of you have this soul need, your future is pulling you towards making money with something you're doing that you're passionate about. And yet, as I said, you feel that you may need to move, change up, or, or Engage with people from other cultures, perhaps. Engage with foreign people. Or reach out further. Go further afield with what you're, what you're selling. Not to just keep it local, but to expand, expand, and, and send it out there, maybe into the world. <laughs> because you do have big ideas and big dreams, Gemini. You really do. And here is the card saying that, that your big ideas and dreams particularly towards the end of the month, you're going to see them shaping up and coming into their own little form. You really are. And you're going to be more enthusiastic about your future. And again, going into the future, and you've also got the moon in the 12th house, you'll be very focused at the end of the month, perhaps in astrology, in tarot, in psychic things. Now, towards the end of the month, it is Halloween. <laughs> So you could be very involved, very, very involved in doing some Halloween rituals or um, Samhain rituals but, or, or whatever you celebrate at the end of the month. Uh, you, you could be very involved in really going for that, getting into the mysticism of that and tapping into d divination, yeah, uh, tapping into the esoteric things which aren't usually seen, yeah. So enjoy that energy, it seems you will. And again, some say this is a Gemini card, but at the end of the month, didn't we say, Gemini, at the start of the reading, to avoid office gossips and to avoid 
anybody who's prepared to spread a rumor. And there was the influence of an air sign there. We do have Libra, we do have Gemini, and now here we have Aquarius. It's all this air energy for you this month that you're feeling very, very excited, but don't lose the run of yourself. If somebody comes to you with a bit of news or a bit of gossip and it's very meaty and juicy, just calm down with that and don't don't put a you know don't fan the flame under that gossip because you've got your future to think about and kind of office gossip in particular um, won't help your future and getting involved in you know like tit for tat you know somebody says something to you and then you throw something back at them and oh if that's what you say well then that's what i say that's an energy drain there gemini your focus should be on bigger things. Your focus should be on you making your money and achieving your future. It's, it's not about getting sucked in to other people's gossip and melodrama. You don't need it now. You really don't. And particularly if it's an Aquarius doing this, you know, challenging you also to a verbal spar, to a verbal fight. Maybe there's an energy towards the end of the month where you might feel you have to chop an Aquarius down to size. Maybe you do, but ah, go gently, go gently because it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary to try to cut anybody down this month to size. This is more the energy of being smarter, going, going through it in a much smarter and organized way so that you don't regret the things that you say at a later date. I don't know. I don't know why that's there. But certainly air signs, Libra, Gemini and Aquarius are featuring very strongly for you this month, Gemini. So I'm going to leave it at that, if you don't mind, Gemini. And if this is the first time seeing my videos, then please subscribe and join me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and now Snapchat. Yeah. And uh, if you are celebrating Halloween at the end of the month, which I suspect you are, with all that very psychic energy at the end of the month, then I hope you have a wonderful time. For those of you celebrating the Celtic festival of Samhain, then I say Ihaona Hanagoyev to you. Have a wonderful Samhain festival. And enjoy everything that you're doing, my love. And until next month, I'm going to leave you with all my love and a big kiss. Mwah. Love you, Gemini. See you next month.